Hi everyone and welcome to my Blender series in which I will talk about fundamentals of texture paint and landscape sculpting. In today's video we're looking at adding multiple textures to the same mesh and blending them together. Now this is a very natural process that is being conducted when using software like Unreal Engine or Unity. That is because game engines have a landmass that stretches as big as you want the level to be, so it makes sense for you to be able to blend multiple textures together in a seamless way. And also on top of that you add multiple other objects and, and you know uh, sort of different types of structures and, and uh, lands on top of it but you know overall underneath you have to be able to blend textures now to achieve this in blender like like you can see in my work in progress video you have to go a few steps of setting this up and even so it is quite limited some limitations to take into account is a hard cap on EV. Now this is only EV, which is set at roughly 24 unique textures. Now bear in mind, unique textures. Any texture that added past that point may result in an error across the whole model. So you know it, it turns all pinkish, and and you, you know you get the idea. But you know please be aware that this is capped to the material and not the mesh. So if you have multiple meshes, you know you can add another material in order to expand upon this. But you can properly mix between the two uh, two materials because they are assigned to polyfaces. So, you know, another limitation to this might also be performance. Now, Blender does not handle textures blended like this as well as Unreal does. I mean, with Unreal, you don't really feel the difference. But with Blender, you do. After you add quite a few of these texture sets together, especially if you haven't optimized them, then this will add up to quite a big chunk to the performance hit on your system. You can see in my scene that the performance isn't exactly spectacular. The, the brush variation is also quite limited. You don't have many options for blending, but the ones that are there should suffice in most cases. It really all depends on you know how much work you want to put into this and, and how much blending you want to do on the base texture you know on the base uh, mesh for the ground itself so in my blender scene i have two materials with color variations uh, these are both stylized textures that i have from substance source you can find these textures in the description below for download now we will blend these two textures on this flat plane and in the shader editor we will copy both these texture setups in the material for the pla flat, pl flat plane <laughs> not flat flat plane just copy and paste the materials with their full setup With the two textures in place, we can now add a mix shader into our material to combine the two. Now, if you have the Node Wrangler add-on, which I do recommend you get, it's it comes with any Blender software, you can just get it from the add-ons. You can select the two nodes, so two nodes, whichever they are, and press F on the keyboard in order to link them automatically together. Now, by moving the FAC, <laughs> should I call it that, uh, you know, factor slider, we can switch between the two textures. We will add a noise texture to serve as a driving factor between the two textures. Now, one thing to note is that this is a perfect, this is the uh, perfect way for breaking repetitive textures on your landscape. So by mixing two or more textures together, you can get away with a lot of repetition without the viewer, viewer catching on. Now, play around with the texture, uh, with the noise texture values to get different shades, but you won't be able to properly see this uh, mix unless you add a color ramp to really add contrast to what the noise texture is doing now basically our noise texture is acting as a mask so a really amazing thing you can do with the textures that are the same but just have color variation is that you can change the scale on one of them to create a clear difference between the two and create a more realistic blend so imagine breaking apart this material even further and, and having you know one color that's uh, a lot a lot you know a lot bigger bigger chunks but then the other one is fragmented a lot more maybe due to weathering or you know depending on what sort of setup you've got and what you're trying to achieve So now for the fun part, let's say you don't want a noise texture or any other kind of mask to decide where your texture changes. You can add a mask that you can paint yourself. We do this by going in our texture paint mode. On the tool tab, we can create a new base color texture, 
at 1000 resolution that should be fine with a color of black set into it so don't don't go for shades of gray or any other colors just go with black and that's fine once you have created it you should you will sh you will see it showing up in the shader editor and you can connect it to the fact of your mix shader we can now paint away and mix the two textures setups together by pressing X on the keyboard, you are switching from painting with white or black. This is deleting or coloring the texture in. You can also add the texture mask to your brush. These texture masks use the same textures that Blender has available, you know, like clouds, musk break, magic, noise. Now, obviously, you can bring your own in as well, you know, alphas, but it, it really, it's really up to you. You can create multiple texture maps if you want, uh, if you want them to, have to for each of them to have a different variation. But this also means constantly switching between them. Now, check my video on how I put together my jungle scene in Blender. In there, I use texture painting as well to seamlessly blend the temple and the ground together, uh, and you know, for a more realistic and seamless approach. So I had mud on the ground, so I was able to blend the mud onto the um, temple as well, so as I said, to make it more clear. Now, you can find the video in the description below. But I do hope you have enjoyed my video and learned something new. Please leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. I will be making more videos on covering these topics for creating landscapes in Blender. I will share with you my tips and tricks that I used to create some of my recent scenes. Now, I'm personally torn between using Unreal or Blender at the minute, so not sure which software I will use in the future for landscape building. But at the minute, I'm having a blast with Blender and you know, really testing things out and sorting them out. Well, I, I must admit, Unreal does also seem very, very uh, intricate because it has so many assets for me to use. Uh, but anyway, I'll see you guys in my next video, which should be released somewhere uh, towards the end of this week. So stay tuned.